Hello, hello, this is Regis Kilbin, and I'm here to talk about the brand new cards from the League of Explorers Adventure that will be hitting Hearthstone in the very near future. I have gone through and done a review of the cards, which you'll be able to find on my channel, but I wanted to go through and identify my top five favorite cards from the expansion. In other words, these are the cards that I think are going to have the biggest impact on the metagame, potentially in Arena, and basically the five cards that you'll see the most. These are my predictions for essentially the five best cards from League of Explorers. And starting at number five is the warrior card Fierce Monkey. This is a three mana, three four with Taunt. It's also a beast. I really just like this card because it's basic value. Three four minions are pretty good at the three mana slot. Warriors have been lacking a really solid three mana play for a long time. This one is a nice defensive one that can help them counter aggressive decks more easily. It's also got Taunt, which opens up some synergies for Taunt Warriors. I don't think the Beast tribal affiliation will matter too much for this card, but uh, just on a basic level, it's high value, it's useful at various points in the game, it has some constructive potential, and it's really, really strong for Warriors in Arena, and Arena Warriors have needed a card like this for a very long time, so it's a very welcome sight. At the number four slot is another three mana card, which is not our last three mana card, and that is the new legendary Bran Bronzebeard. This is a 2-4 for three mana, which is still pretty nice, and a lot of strong three drops have that stat alignment. And that's okay as long as they have a strong effect, and that's exactly what Bran Bronzebeard has. With this card, your battle cries trigger twice. In other words, anytime this is on the board, when you play another card with a battle cry, that battle cry effect will go off twice. Say you're a shaman and you have a fire elemental and you hit a minion with that three damage battle cry from the fire elemental, it will do six damage instead. So you can see that uh, with Dr. Boom, for instance, it will summon four boom bots instead of two. Some effects won't necessarily work quite properly with this, like say maybe a uh, Cobble Shadow Priest if you're a priest, but more often than not you'll be able to insert a number of cards into your deck that Brands Bronzebeard has some pretty strong synergies with. There are some pretty powerful Paddle Cry effects, so you can see why doubling them really does matter. And when that cool effect is attached to a reasonable body, I think that means this is a pretty decent card. I don't know that entirely new decks will be built around it, but just as a solid tempo 3-drop that opens up some big play opportunities, Brands Bronbeard will probably find his way into more than a few decks. At the number 3 slot is a new Hunter card. It's a 2-mana Dark Trap. This is yet another trap for Hunters, but this one is a little bit different. This is a secret that when the opponent uses their hero power... This trap will do 5 damage to a random enemy. Now that means it can hit the enemy hero or just a random enemy minion. In most cases, you want it to hit the enemy hero if you're playing Hunter in general, just because you're looking for a lot of extra damage, and 5 damage for 2 mana is pretty nuts. If it clears a big minion conveniently for you, that's not going to be a problem. Occasionally it will whiff and hit something like a 1-1 Silverhand Recruit, and that might feel like a waste. But on average, I think the 5 damage will impact the game in a pretty significant way. But the really important thing about this card is that just because it exists, just because people know that Dart Trap is a thing, and they don't know what secret you have played currently, it means that they'll be very hesitant to use their hero power. You might be able to deny people hero power turns simply because you have a trap up. Instead of a warrior armoring up for two, he might be scared that he'll just take five damage. Instead of a rogue equipping a new weapon, maybe they can't risk that. So they have to just sit there with one charge on their weapon instead of two. So whether or not this card's even in your deck, it's still impactful to the metagame. And when a card can impact the game without even being present, you know that it's pretty powerful. So Dark Trap basically just gives people tougher decisions and more to think about when they're already playing Hunter and fighting for their lives, and that's a very big deal. 
At the number two slot is yet another three mana card, and surprisingly it won't be our last. This is the Rogue's Unearthed Raptor. This is yet another 3-4 minion for three mana, and it has a really nifty battle cry, in that the battle cry actually mixes in a death rattle effect. With this battle cry, you can choose any other friendly minion you have on the board and gain a copy of its death rattle effect. So there are a lot of powerful death rattles in the game, right? So imagine something like a piloted sky golem. You could play a piloted sky golem, an unearthed raptor for nine mana on a single turn, and you would have a 6-4 that when it dies, it summons a four drop, and you'd have a three drop unearthed raptor that when it dies, it summons a four drop. In other words, they'd be punished for killing your unearthed raptor because it's more likely to spawn something scarier. So you could have an unearthed raptor that spawned a piloted shredder that spawned a haunted creeper, for instance, all for just three mana. That's crazy. That's just insanely good. You could have two Sylvanases on the board. Imagine how powerful that is for only nine mana. I think that Unearthed Raptor might just be good enough to spawn an entirely new type of control deck for rogues that focuses on death rattles and just late game value. But even as a three drop, it's still good. Even if you just copy a Haunted Creeper on turn two into an Unearthed Raptor on turn three, it's just packed with value, and as a 3-4 body, it's good anyway. So it's a solid tempo play, it's got value in the late game, and it's really good in Arena as well. Unearthed Raptor will be a card that is seen in rogue decks. It might just not be the kind of rogue, de rogue decks that we're used to. And then finally, we have my favorite new card from League of Explorers. This is the card that I think will have the biggest impact on the game, and not necessarily the biggest impact, but will be the best when it is used. And that is the new 3-mana mage spell, Forgotten Torch. I think that this is one of the best cards that Freeze Mage can possibly put in their deck, but it could also work in various other types of mage, like Tempo Mage or uh, even Mech Mage. Forgotten Torch is good enough and offers enough average value that it can kind of carve out a spots for itself in all the various different kinds of mage archetypes that are so popular. So the 3-mana Forgotten Torch, how this works is, at its base level it's just a 3-mana th deal 3 damage spell, so it's a little bit expensive compared to, say, Frostbolt. But when you cast it, you also shuffle a Roaring Torch into your deck, which is a 3-mana deal 6 damage spell, in other words, a cheap Fireball, which is 9 total damage for 6 mana, which is the same as a Fireball Frostbolt. But it only takes up one slot in your deck, and it makes your damage draws more dense. In other words, you will draw for three fireballs instead of two fireballs, making it more likely that you do find that burst damage. And that's going to be great in Freeze Mage, but again, I think it's just a valuable spell in pretty much every kind of mage deck. I think Forgotten Torch is going to be a very common and frustrating card to play against, but it's going to be great if you love mage. There aren't a ton of big, amazing legendaries that are going to change the game from League of Explorers, but there are a handful of three drops like Forgotten Torch that uh, might just surprise you at how good and impactful they are. So Forgotten Torch is my favorite of the three drops and my favorite new League of Explorers card. I can't wait to see this thing in action in all the various mage decks, and I can't wait to see all these cards in play. So there you have it. Those are my top five League of Explorers cards. I'd love to hear yours in the comments, so let me know if I'm crazy or wrong. If you think I absolutely overlooked an amazing card, I'd like to discuss it with you. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, game on!